Hey all, Asuda here. Today, I'm going to be bringing you part 2 of my user-made map series. Before I get started, however, I wanted to apologize about the lack of quality in my previous video. I wasn't feeling too well, and I wanted to rush out the video due to me failing to keep the promise of posting it on Wednesday. Newsflash, never rush your projects. They're 10 times worse that way. So today, we're going to be going over three maps, Nuclear Meltdown, Tria, and Precarious Puzzles. Well, I would be playing Nuclear Meltdown if it weren't for the fact that I can't even get past the first room. I really can't give a rating for a map I can't see nor play, so to the creators, please, please fix this. I'll put some details as what I thought was the problem in the description. Anyways, instead of Nuclear Meltdown, we're going to be doing Northern Workshop and that'll be tagged on at the end of the video. So, let's get started with Tria. When I first saw this map, I was just as stunned as the next person. The map looked gorgeous, there were plenty of neat details able to see, be seen at any point in the map. Each section was well defined and very memorable. The map follows what I could only assume to be a laboratory and a mining facility theme, but it's, it's up in the air for me. It definitely looks nice, but I really couldn't find one specific thing to relate it to. It made it a tad overwhelming, in my opinion. The sheer color and the vibrance really made it stand out in my mind, and the name Tria was a clear reference to the fact that there were three developers that combined their talents to make this map. On the contrary, it's rather evident as the map seems to be lacking any sort of specific style. Other than that, the name really doesn't make too much sense in the context of the setting. The music fit rather nicely with the theming, and while I normally don't like dubstep being in BGM for the maps, I can give them this one a slide. As for the gameplay, I could only really sum it up in one word, iffy. I suppose I should take you step by step in this case throughout the map. So the first orange room clearly shows an effort where the platforms are placed, but at first glance it is extremely overwhelming as there are entirely too many routes to take. The tunnels, while certainly looking nice, are a bit of a bummer in this map. Insane maps are centered around making the jumps under time pressure, and having several hallways where you need to pass through just leaves a sour taste in my mouth, especially for an insane map. The individual rooms at the end of the hallways are nice in and of themselves, but there is seemingly no penalty until you run out of time for one mad dash up to the exit area. It kind of feels like there's no time pressure and then suddenly you're just dead. The gameplay isn't bad by any means, but it's not what I would want for an insane map. As for the difficulty, this map does very well represent what a milder and insane should look like, but only for the individual rooms. You really need to just iron out the hallways to make it better. But I must say, the practicality of this map is of a very high quality. Even if I can't see this map in Flood Escape, the attention to detail is amazing and well thought out, and many of the individual rooms so show a good sense of level design for both ends of the skill spectrum. So for an overall rating of Tria, I give it an 80 out of 100. The biggest change I would propose to this map would be something to do with the hallways, instead of making it a tiresome walk. If that were to be changed, this map would surely be one of the best out there. So next up is Precarious Puzzles. I'm going to preface this review with stating that I have not seen the end of this map, so I'm just going to be reviewing the first two thirds of the level. Aside from a rather questionable spawn, the map looks very, very nice. The use of quicksand is very clever and it definitely looked nice as I traversed through the rooms of the maze-like temple. Aside from a shout out to the statue holding the prism in the center, I really don't have too many major contents on how the level looks. It's an all around solid looking map, and we know that no news is good news. The name is what you would expect of it, and it's very, very nice. However, the music's missing. I mean, I saw a video of what the real music was online, but it seems to have been removed, and assuming the lack of music is what's going to be in the map, it's definitely a big downside, especially because the lack of music causes the music to glitch out in the lobby. Very similarly to another map showcased by Awesome E Zero, the map looked amazing and I was definitely intrigued by its design. However, in a similar manner to his other map, the gameplay was poorly executed. While it definitely doesn't feel rushed, it's a lot more misplaced in this map. The first room is a really nice take on wall jumps and many of the jumps were challenging, but this is where the majority of my compliments fall. The second room is just abysmal. I mean, the idea of employing aspects from other Roblox obbies is very honorable, like the invisible path or maybe the moving the moving pillars, but the execution is just terrible. At first, the moving pillars block you even when there's a gap in between them, and the tile area for the for the invisible path is an absolute guessing game rather than a chance for you to get rather than for a challenge for you to get through the map. Flood Escape is 
about jumps and about speed, you shouldn't have to memorize, well, okay, you should have to memorize where to go, but it shouldn't be in the form of an invisible path. And the way it was executed, how it just feels it doesn't even feel like a flood escape map. And the way it was made, it definitely hurts the map. It, the moving platforms, I guess they're serviceable, but even that, Crazy Blocks has already shown the use of moving platforms because of lag. So, in my opinion, that's a big no-no. And because the map is extremely hot and cold, the practicality category is also very hot and cold. The attention to detail was much appreciated, and there are a lot of neat shortcuts that high school players could pull off. However, this map in no way feels like a proper Flood Escape map, and is brutal to anyone picking up the map for the first time. I'd have to give this map a rating of 56 out of 100. Even if the map looks great, the parkour sections need to be heavily overhauled. I'm by no means against innovating what a map can be like, but the, if the execution is this poor, then I'm not sure if it makes for the best idea. Finally, we're going to take a look at Northern Workshop, just in time for the Christmas season. The design of this map is very cutesy and very effective. It's a little bit too squarish for my tastes, it gives a rigid feel, but the theme is all around solid. The music is fitting even if it doesn't overlay with the map too well, and the naming convention is up to par. It's an all around good looking map, there's really nothing much else to be said about it. The gameplay is serviceable and the platforms are quality, but there's a few jumps and turns that are really, really hard to figure out the first time going through the map. Things like getting the fourth button, you have to go down to a lower level, which is very uncommon. The Christmas tree, you have to jump across the ornaments, that kind of confused me the first time around. And the grappled presents forced me to think for a moment where I had to go. And having to stop and address your surroundings for an extended period of time in Flood Escape is never a good thing. The jumps are quite standard, and the shelf section was really nice, but there's nothing really gameplay-wise that stands out about this map. As for the practicality, there's generally an overall plainness and non-memorability to the map. It could be serviced at a flood escape map, but it feels more like a challenge obby to be found on sandbox or something with the number of squares used. It doesn't offer anything for skilled players, and it gives newer players a slight headache when it comes to figuring out the layout for the first time. So overall, I would give Northern Workshop a 67 out of 100. It's definitely got a solid design and the gameplay isn't too bad. But it feels like a stagnant map, and it doesn't really put anything on the table that makes me appreciate the map more and more. Perhaps maybe changing up some of the jumps and the angles of the map, and spicing up the gameplay would make this map a little bit better. Well, thank you for watching my review of these three maps. Do you agree or disagree with my ratings? Are there other maps you would like me to test, or do you just want to say hi? Leave a comment, or you can message me on Discord. I'm open to any suggestions and feedback. Next week, we're going to be giving Lonely Tower a shot, so wish me luck. This has been Asada, and happy map making.